Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can modify styling of your navigation bar in SwiftUI. We'll eventually create a reusable view modifier that you can use in any project. In the process, we'll dig into the documentation, and I'll point out some things to be aware of along the way. Before I get started, please make sure you leave a comment below if you enjoy the video, and give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you ring the bell to be notified of new videos. So if this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. I encourage you to work along with me in this video. We'll not be doing a lot of coding, but in the end you'll have something that you can use in your own projects. The starter project is available for download from the link in the description below. It's a simple project with three views. The opening content view is embedded in a navigation view as you can see in the code. It has a trailing navigation bar button that presents a modal sheet and a navigation link that uses a button to push another view onto the navigation stack. If we inspect the modal sheet view code, we'll see that I've embedded it in a navigation view with an inline navigation bar and a button that allows me to dismiss the modal sheet. The pushed view is not embedded in a navigation view itself explicitly, though I do that for the preview so that I can see what it looks like in the preview. But because it's in the navigation stack, it inherits the navigation view and gets a navigation bar when presented. I have specifically said that I want to, to be in line, so it will be a compact navigation bar instead of one with large titles. Now, here's our challenge. I want to be able to change our view so that I have the same color background everywhere. And that includes the body and the navigation bar. And I also want to change the color of the button and title text on the navigation bar as well. First, let's deal with our content. I can embed all of our view content in all three views inside a Z stack and add a color view for the background. And I want that color to be orange. So in content view, I'll first embed the V stack inside of the Z stack. And then as the first item in the Z stack, I'll use a color view that will serve as the background. Now I want to change that color to an orange color. And the first thing that I'll warn you about is this. Your first inclination will be to specify the color view in SwiftUI like this. However, this orange color modifier is actually a different color from the UI color orange. It's lighter. And when we get to modify our navigation bar itself, we're going to have to specify a UI color for orange. So to specify a UI color for our color view, we can use the color view constructor that allows us to specify a UI color like this. Notice it's a darker shade. Now I want to make sure that this background color view covers the entire screen, so I'm going to specify ignores safe area. This looks great. My navigation bar is completely covered. Now there's one other gotcha that I have to get back to in a minute, but let's move on to the other two views first. First, the modal sheet view. There's just this text view here, so let's embed it in the Z stack and do exactly the same thing as we did in our first view by adding in a color view with that UI color orange and make sure we also ignore safe areas. Notice this time, however, that the color doesn't cover the navigation bar. Onto the push navigation view to do the same thing. First, we'll embed the text view in a Z stack And then we'll add a color view with that UI color of orange as the background. And we'll make sure that we extend it to ignore safe areas. Again, we see that the navigation bar hasn't been covered. And while I'm here, let me just correct this typo for pushed view. Let's return now to content view. And it looks like I don't have to do anything here to change the color of my navigation bar because it's covered. However, I have included in this project a file called samples that is simply an enum with a static property that has some very long text. I want to replace this text hello world with the text from my enum. 
And in order to, to scroll, I'll need to embed my view in a scroll view. So first, let's change the V stack to a scroll view. And now I'll change hello world to be this sample dot very long text. Nothing much has changed, but as soon as I start to scroll up, the large navigation bar collapses to an inline version and the background doesn't cover our navigation view. Well, we also want to modify the title color and the tint color for any navigation bar button. And this includes this one here, as well as the back button when we go to the second view. Open the documentation and look for UI navigation bar. Scroll down to where you see some information on customizing the appearance of the navigation bar. And if you read that, you'll see that there are a number of different attributes that we can apply. If we scroll right down to the bottom, we'll see that there are some properties of the navigation bar that are really important. We have the ability to control the appearance settings for a standard height navigation bar, a compact height navigation bar, and for any scrollable content that reaches the matching edge of the navigation bar. In addition to that, we can turn off or on translucency if that's what we wanted. Notice that these appearance properties conform to the new UI navigation bar appearance class. So let's take a look at it and see what it can do for us. As the overview says, we will need to create an instance of the new UI navigation bar appearance and then apply the properties and methods on this instance. You'll see that there are properties to configure the title and buttons, but what about the background? If you scroll a little further, you'll see that the UI navigation bar appearance inherits the UI bar appearance. So let's drill down on this. Here you see that we have all sorts of background and shadow properties. I'm not going to go over all of these, but hopefully you'll be able to read the documentation and experiment with them on your own. So how do we apply this in SwiftUI? Well, the first thing we do is create an initializer for the view where we'll initiate our navigation view, which in our case is this content view. And then within the init, I'm going to create an instance of UI navigation bar appearance. Well, the first thing that we want to do is set the attributes for our title. If we go back to the documentation once more for UI navigation appearance, I'll see that it has two different properties for this, the title text attributes and large title text attributes. And that covers the title for the smaller inline navigation bar and for the larger one. And string attributes are just a dictionary in the form of an NS attributed string key and any other kind of type, where NS attributed string key is the name of the attribute and any is the value of some type. And we can specify as many of these attributes as we want. First, let's take out the title text attributes property, which is the title for the compact navigation view. I'm just going to apply one attribute and that's for the key that will change the title color. And that is the foreground color key. And I'm going to choose the system background color so it will change between light and dark mode. Now the large title text attribute property is one that changes the title for the large navigation bar. So I'm going to use the same attribute. Now remember that the navbar appearance inherits from UI bar appearance. So let's see if there's anything there that might be useful to us. Well, there are some interesting choices here for our background, and you can play with one of these three functions to see the effect, but we're going to be applying a background color. So in the next section, I see that we have that property. Notice that there's also a background image property that you might want to play around with for some interesting effects. However, all I want to do is set the background color property to my UI color of orange. So let's do that now. Now it may not be too obvious to you when I go to this view, but there is a line separating the navigation bar from the content view. 
If you want your navigation bar to blend in with the view itself, you may wish to remove this line. And if I check out the documentation for UI bar appearance, I see that this is determined by the shadow color property. So if we want to remove that separator line, I can simply set the shadow color to clear. Well, now we've defined our attributes for our navigation bar appearance, but we haven't yet applied it to our navigation bar. So going back to the documentation one more time, we can check out the UI navigation bar, and down at the bottom we see that there are these three properties. And we're going to assign the same instance of our navigation bar appearance to all three of these UI navigation bar appearances. So we'll start with the standard appearance, set it to the navigation bar appearance, and repeat that process for the compact appearance, and for the scroll edge appearance. And while we're at it, we can set the tint color to the same color as the title, which is system background. Let's refresh the canvas now and see how we're doing. If I scroll up on the content view, the navigation bar collapses and it still maintains the properties defined. In both the sheet and navigation views, all have that same background color and text and button colors or tint. And there is no line separator between the navigation bar and the content view. If I'd rather have that separator line, we can comment out this line here that sets it to clear. I'll leave that preference up to you. Well, now that we have what we want, it'd be nice if we could make this a bit more generic and reusable. And for this, I'm going to use a view modifier. If you want more information on how to create view modifiers, I have a video on that topic, and I'll leave a link in the description below. The first thing I'm going to do is cut out this initializer from the view so that I have it on my clipboard. And then outside of my content view, I'm going to create a new struct that I'll call nav appearance modifier, and I'll make it conform to the view modifier protocol. Now this will require a function that's called body with one parameter, which is content, and it returns some view. And what we'll return is the same content, so basically doing nothing. But it's in this view that I'm going to paste that same initializer that I just cut from above. Now, as I said, I want to make this a bit more generic, so instead of hard coding some of those properties, I want to be able to specify them when I apply the modifier. So in the initializer, let's add some parameters. First, one's for background color and foreground color, which will both be of type UI color. And then one for tint color that I'll make an optional type of UI color. And then for the final one, I want to have a Boolean parameter to specify whether or not I want to hide the separator. With those in place now, I can replace the colors for both of our title text attributes with that foreground color. For the background, we can use background color. Next, to show or hide the separator, we can enclose this within an if statement and only show it if hide separator has been specified as true. And finally, for the tint color, we can specify it only if it's not optional. And if it has been specified, so we can use an if let here to unwrap the tint color and then apply it to our appearance's tint color. Now there's one more thing that we should do. To make this view modifier work like a typical Swift UI view modifier, we can create an extension on view. And then within that, I'll create a new function called navigation appearance. And I'll have it return some view. For the arguments of this new function, I'm going to use the same arguments as I had in my view modifier but I'll set two default values. 
I'm going to set the tint color to nil and hide separator to false. And then in the body, I can assign the modifier method to self and pass in our view modifier along with those same arguments. Now we have our view modifier finished. If we refresh our preview now, we'll see that we've lost our navigation styling because we cut out our initializer. So what I need to do is to assign our new navigation appearance modifier to the navigation view. And because we have two defaults, we have two different initializers. If I choose the first one, all it's asking for is the background color and the foreground color. So let's choose a UI color of orange and a UI color of system background for the foreground color. Now, as you can see, it's changed the background color for all of our navigation bars, as well as the title text color. There is a separator line, and the tint color is my default tint color. Well, I can change the tint color either by specifying an accent color in my asset folder so that it'll apply to all links and buttons in my app, or I can choose to specify it only for my navigation bar by adding in that argument in our function call. So let's do that by adding tint color and assign it the value of a system background color. And finally, if I want to remove that separator line, I can specify the hide separator and set it to true. And if I run this in the simulator, because I'm using a system color for my color attributes for the title text, it'll change with the change of a light and dark appearance. Well, now I can use this view modifier and the extension for any project. All I have to do is move it out of here into its own file. So let's cut it out of here. And I'll create a new file and give it the same name. We'll need to change the import to Swift UI and then just paste in that cutout text. When I build, the errors are gone. And we have this nice view modifier that we can use to change the colors of our navigation bar using whatever arguments we pass in. I'll leave it up to you to experiment with some of the other arguments like the background image property. Just check out the documentation and modify the view modifier accordingly.